Dr. Ashison here, and we're finishing up chapter five. This is our fourth lecture talking about color and light constancy. So color constancy is the idea that we're gonna perceive a color as constant, even though it's in different um, illuminations, different lighting conditions, um, as long as there's enough wavelengths available. So as long as there's enough light <laughs> to see it, we're gonna perceive that color as the same, regardless of if it's a dim room, a light room, if it's shaded, um, any of those things, we're gonna perceive it as the same. And the visual system automatically determines the amount of each wavelength refracted um, that's reflected from the surfaces and uses this to estimate um, the illuminant. Okay, so basically what's happening is that the visual, and this is how the visual system can get tricked, okay, um, because it's going to be estimating and automatically determining these things. And the visual system tends to achieve color constancy um, through this chromatic adaptation. So remember when we were looking at those four color squares and we saw the after image when we were looking at um, that green and black American flag and we saw the after image, um, that was chromatic adaptation. Um, so again, this color constancy that we're seeing um, tends to operate on those same similar processes. But color constancy can fail. Um, and this usually happens when the illuminating light is very, very um, narrow. So if you're seeing things in a blue light or if you're seeing things um, in a red light, we're only allowing very, very narrow range of wavelengths. Um, and we also see that color constancy can also fail if just one surface is seen against a black and empty background. Another situation where color constancy can fail um, is our dress again. Um, I personally, when I saw this dress the first time on social media, I would look at it one time and it would look blue and black and I would look at it another time and it would look white and gold and I could scroll up and down in my Facebook feed and really trip myself out. Um, and basically what was going on at least for me is that there was issues with lighting constancy. Um, my brain was not saying that the lighting consist uh, situations were the same and so it was changing changing what color it thought it was depending on those. You can kind of see that here on the left. Um, we have a lot different lighting situation than we do on the right. Um, and that perceives um, different kind of, um, those dresses look different because of the lighting differences in them. Another example of um, this comes from the different kinds of lighting. Um, so here we have blue paper. Um, we have the SPDs for blue paper in the middle. Um, and you can see that the, the two um, in the middle, it says reflectance of blue paper, and those two things are absolutely identical. But what we have different is the illuminating light. Um, one, we have um, an incandescent light bulb, and the other one, we have a fluorescent light bulb. Because they have different um, wavelength, because they allow different amounts of different wavelengths, what we see is we end up getting a different um, um, kind of refracted light, a different SPD of the light that's coming back at us. What's interesting though, um, is you can look up that blue piece of paper under a fluorescent light and you can look at those that blue piece of paper under an incandescent light and you're still gonna think it's blue. Um, even though we'll see these differences um, in reflect, refracted light. There's a really great video um, from the National Geographic Channel, um, one of their brain games um, series, and the whole thing is great. It's about 21 minutes, um, but if you really wanna see the part about color constancy, um, start at 14 minutes, and I think it goes to about 16 or 18 minutes, but start at 14 minutes, and the video that's linked on Canvas should um, immediately start um, there at 14 minutes, and it's a, it does a good job of um, walking you through some color constancy um, kind of demonstration. But again, the whole thing is great, and so I recommend the whole thing, but you're only assigned the part of color constancy. The other thing that we have in the visual system is lightness constancy. Um, and this is that the suggests that the relative lightness or darkness of an object is consistent um, even under different intensities of light. And again, this is about the same purpose as color constancy. It helps us organize our system. It helps us make sense of the world around us. Um, and it allows for intrinsic property of a surface um, to be the same. It allows us to see that your red binder is red if you're in you know, your dark bedroom or if you're outside um, in the bright light. But that's still red. It's still the exact same color red. It didn't change. Um, but the lighting around it changed. 
An example of that um, is this picture here. Because of the shading of it, um, when you look at this, um, A and C on the left image look very, very different, right? They look very different. One looks like it's supposed to be white and one looks like it's supposed to be gray on the checkerboard. Um, but what you actually see on the right, on the, um, the picture with the bar, that gray bar is the exact same color. The whole bar is the exact same color. And it blends into A and it blends into C. So really, A and C are actually the same color. Um, but the problem is, um, is because of those differences in lighting, we're perceiving A and C as different colors. And this is a function of lighting constancy. Um, this is operating on this ratio principle um, that has a two-part anchoring rule. And your book does a really good job of describing this, but I'm going to go through it briefly as well. Um, the first part of this is that in any given scene, um, the part that reflects the most light is seen as white. So in our last image, the part that was reflecting, reflecting the most light was perceived as white, um, or the lightest shade of gray in the scene. Um, and then everything else is in relation to that anchor point. The second part of this rule is that the scene consists of regions under different amounts of illumination, which we saw in our last image. Again, we saw that shadow from our green cylinder. Um, the system will apply this anchor, anchoring rule separately to each illumination rule, which is how we saw A and C as different colors even though that they were the same color because there was shading on A and there wasn't on C. So we perceived C as darker than A, even though they were the exact same color. And finally, let's go through, um, let's end this with a video that kind of shows you how both our light and color constancy work. As you watch this video, you'll see um, that you're not gonna, your perception of that building doesn't change. That building is the same. What you're gonna notice is differences um, in kind of more perceptual things around it, but you're not gonna think that that color of that building changes. the duration of that, you perceive that building as white. You didn't at some point perceive that building as yellow or that building as pink or that building as blue, even though it had different, it at times was refracting that kind of light. It was reflecting that kind of light. What you perceived was differences in the lighting conditions around it, that the building was still white and you perceived it as white and those differences were more ambient than they were attributed to the building itself. So that ends up our conversation on color. Thanks so much.